title of this poem is The Cry. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me, and he heard my cry. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and I set my feet upon a rock and established my goings, and he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it in fear and shall trust in the Lord. Blessed is that man that maketh the Lord his trust, and respecteth not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. April 4th, 1968, shots rang onto a balcony in Memphis, Tennessee, and a voice cried out to God before a nation of people preaching the message of love and unity. A voice that the enemies of God mocked, a voice that even his own people rejected, a voice that was silenced by men, but a cry that came before God was heard. And those shots may have rang, but a man that had seen the mountaintop, a man that had a dream, a man that if he had sneezed, he wouldn't have been there to see blacks and whites go to school together. The man whose cry was heard took his last breath. And according to Jesse Jackson, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s last words were to musician Ben Branch. He said in the meeting tonight, make sure you play. Precious Lord, take my hand. And today, in the midst of Christian persecution, in the midst of sanctity of marriage between a male and a female being destroyed, in a time where fornication is normal and abortion is acceptable, and killing one another is expected, I cry out to God for a nation of believers, Oh, precious Lord, take my hand. Unto thee will I cry, O Lord, my rock, be not silent to me, Lest if you be silent to me, I become like them that go down into the pit. Hear the voice of my supplications when I cry unto thee. When I lift up my hands toward thy holy oracle, draw me not away with the wicked and with the workers of iniquity, which speak peace to their neighbors, but mischief is in their hearts. Give them according to their deeds and according to the wickedness of their endeavors. Give them after the work of their hands, written to them their desert. Because they regard not the works of the Lord, nor the operation of his hands, and he shall destroy them and not build them up. Blessed be the Lord, because he hath heard the voice of my supplication. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him, and I am helped. Therefore my heart greatly rejoiceth, and with my song will I praise him. The Lord is their strength, and he is the saving strength of his anointed. Save thy people and bless thine inheritance. Feed them also and lift them up. Forever, O oh Lord. In the year 1500, the birth of a new nation would begin as men were hunted like animals and sold like cattle. And men, women, and children who were once from many different tribes and lands formed a new nation of people that would become known as Negro, colored, African American, or black. And through much persecution, this nation of people which traveled through the middle passage across the Atlantic Ocean, 15% would die on the voyage, sleeping in casket-sized manholes, chained to one another hand and foot, while the stench of blood and death filled their nose as they only could dream that God would hear their prayers and act. An estimated 4 million would die on the journey so today the world may know the power of God to take a people who were once considered three-fifths of a human being and use them to preach his word. People such as Elibeza Bumphrey who had five owners and would eventually run away to her freedom and tell a nation of people, ain't I a woman? She would go on to fight for abolitionist rights and women's equality. She would preach the word wherever she would go. She had to abandon her four children, but she cried out for freedom of a nation, saying, Ain't I a woman? Isabella Bomfrey would soon have her freedom bought for $20 and would change her name to Sojourner Truth and would soon tell the world, The Spirit calls me and I must go. And I get on my knees just as Christ did in the Garden of Gethsemane and crying until blood sweats from my veins because a nation of non-believers distanced themselves from God and a nation of believers are too cowardice to tell the world they need a savior. But I seek a day when we can follow our savior who said he is the way, truth, and the life. I seek him because I know the spirit calls me and I must go and not only me but you must go also. 
And today in the midst of a time where children are no longer a responsibility, but you can simply safe surrender them. In a time when social acceptance is more important than education. In a time when we are being told that all men evolved from monkeys and billboards are going up across the world saying there probably is no God. So stop worrying. I get on my knees with revival in my mind. Because today is the day where we become the bride of Christ and not just people who say they believe. Today is the day when we are Christ's mouthpiece and not just the silent majority. And today is the day where the church stands up and represents the truth. And all those who are opposed to the vision, let God do the separating. Tradition must die today and the spirit of Christ must live. For I know that the old nature died on the cross and he resurrected a new man. I look to the hills from which cometh my health and I see my redemption draw off nigh. Be merciful unto me, O God, oh, be merciful unto me. For my soul trusteth in thee, yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. I will cry unto God most high, unto God that performeth all things for me, and he shall sin from heaven and save me from the reproach of him that will swallow me up. Selah. Think about it. God shall send forth his mercy and his truth, and my soul is among lions, and I lie even among them that are set on fire, even the sons of man, whose teeth are spears and arrows, and their tongue a sharp sword. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens, and let thy glory be above all the earth. September 1957, nine black children were blocked from entering a school in Little Rock, Arkansas, because men refused to believe that we were all created in the image of the Most High God. And on September 12, 1957, the Council of Church Women called for a citywide prayer service and people gathered before the throne of the Most High God and began to cry. Hear my cry, O God, and attend unto my prayers. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. And I will abide in the tabernacle forever and I will trust in the cover of your wings. O oh, Selah. And God heard the cries of those women because on September 24th, 1957, President Eisenhower ordered the 101st Airborne Division of the United States Army to not sneak the children in school, but march them right through the front door. And the guards will remain there the entire school year because God heard a cry. And today, in the midst of chaos, when the world has turned its back on God, when prisons are the only answer for incorrigible individuals, when children disobey parents and are becoming mothers and fathers as young as 12, when the stench of filth pours through movies such as Brokeback Mountain and the Da Vinci Code, when the men claim in this life to be Jesus Christ and they lead a whole army of people to commit suicide in their own name, I don't fret over evildoers, I simply pray. I pray for the coming of the Lord. I pray for the coming of Jesus Christ. I pray for the hope of this world. America is, is guilty before an almighty God. And our president says change must come. But I say change is not in economics or foreign policies, war strategies or health care. The change is not in blacks being allowed to control the White House. The change is in you because the change is repentance and returning back to the ways of the Lord. And as MC Hammer once so eloquently said, we got to pray just to make it today. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cries. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of all of their troubles. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Today we must cry for a nation who has considered the wages of sin as their only option. We must cry for a nation that calls evil good. We must cry for a nation whose leaders seek to please Satan and have no intention on following the pathways of God. We must pray for a president who considers compromising the gospel in order to satisfy a nation that believes in many gods. We must pray for our preachers who have left God for money. We must pray for our church that refuses to offend a brother or sister but accommodates their sin. What kind of nation and people have we become before God? Does anyone take the Bible seriously anymore? I'm waiting. Anybody? I guess not. 
Does anybody consider that the Bible is more than just words, but it is the word of God given to man? We must pray for men and women who preach the word of God to make a name for themselves. Where are the people that truly worship Christ? Where are the people who stand in fear before an almighty God? Man, where are the true believers? And when he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, do you not judge and avenge our blood on those that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season unto their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Revelation 6 verses 9 through 11. The cry.